Uh, the time is uh, 5.42. We're going to have um, some more reaction uh, to the words of the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko, who said in the past hour that he doesn't want President Trump to address both Houses of Parliament in Westminster Hall when the state visit happens later this year. Mr Burko told MPs that opposition to racism and sexism were hugely important considerations in the House of Commons. I would not wish to issue an invitation to President Trump to speak in the Royal Gallery. And I conclude by saying to the Honourable Gentleman this. We value our relationship with the United States. If a state visit takes place, that is way beyond and above the pay grade of the Speaker. However, as far as this place is concerned, I feel very strongly that our opposition to racism and to sexism and our support for equality before the law and an independent judiciary are hugely important considerations in the House of Commons. The scenes, the scenes there in the House of Commons uh, just a short while ago. Let's go straight to the central lobby and talk to the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Tim Farron. Uh, Tim, thanks for coming to talk to us. A remarkably outspoken intervention there by the Speaker. Was he right? Uh, it was outspoken, it was irregular, he was right. It's worth bearing in mind that I'm absolutely certain he would never have made the contribution he made today if it wasn't for the Prime Minister making this rash and uh, somewhat desperate invitation to the President uh, just a week or so ago to come over for a state visit. I think the Speaker felt the, the need to put a counterbalance to that. I do not believe it is wrong for our Prime Minister to meet with the President of the United States. Neither do I think it's wrong that the President comes over to the United Kingdom. It's incredibly important that we have strong relationships with as many countries as possible, particularly with our close and long-standing ally, the United States of America. However, to offer him the red carpet treatment, which a state visit would have been, and indeed a Westminster Hall speaking engagement would also have been, would be to be seen at this particular moment to endorse the appalling actions that he's been responsible for recently recently, particularly on endorsing torture, uh, sexist actions and comments, and of course most recently the uh, Muslim uh, entry ban. Lots of people watching, um, Mr Farron, will think, you know, what's the difference between inviting President Trump to Westminster Hall or to speak to people in the Royal Gallery, which is the other forum, of course, for mm. visitors to come and speak, including lots of prominent leaders in the past. Um, really, these are procedural things, ceremonial things, or are they more than that? Well, they are more than that, and uh, a uh, picture can uh, paint a, a thousand words, and, and I think it seems to me that whereas people with, shall we say, a, a, an even worse human rights record than Donald Trump have been invited to this place in the past, and people will point out inconsistency, I am sure, but this is about making sure you react appropriately at the appropriate time. And the Prime Minister has put this country in a very weak and difficult position by, I think, probably out of self-inflicted desperation because of the, the hard Brexit choice she has made, which has cut us off from our single market uh, allies, that she's now desperate for a quick deal with the United States, irrespective of whether or not it's in our interest to do a quick deal. And that means that she's rolled out the red carpet to Donald Trump and the Speaker feeling, uh, I think, to put the, uh, the balance in play, uh, to say that if she, well, he will not be welcome to have the red carpet rolled out for him here in this place. He would not have done this, I am certain, had the Prime Minister not made that desperate offer of a state visit just the other week. Where does it leave the concept of a speaker who is meant to be strictly impartial and not getting drawn into matters which are potentially party political in nature? Well, my sense, he responded to a question from a member. He's entitled to make a response. Uh, Mr Burko, uh, whatever one thinks about him, has always had a, a very strong uh, position when it comes to matters of uh, equality and of human rights. He very much values this place as a kind of a holder of those uh, values that we, most of us, I think, share uh, in this country. I think he would not have even dreamt of making the comments he had if it wasn't for the Prime Minister putting his and indeed all of us in a very difficult position by making this rash and rather desperate offer of a state visit just last week. So I think, you know, Theresa May is the one you should perhaps point the finger at. And we are seeing images of that visit uh, as you speak, Tim. Tim Farron, it's good of you to join us at Westminster. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.